It's time for episode 21 of The Crisis Show here on Google Hangouts and on YouTube. And today we are doing something just a little differently. We are airing uh, an interview we did earlier today with our guest, and I'd like to introduce him. Uh, his name is Steve Giovinco, the owner and president of Recover Reputation, an online reputation firm in New York City. Steve, uh, welcome to the show and thanks for being with us. Hey, Rich, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Great. So, uh, Steve, our audience is uh, made up largely of business leaders, executives, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, and many of these businesses are very good at what they do, but they don't yet understand the online world uh, and how reputations are uh, built and how they're defended and sometimes how they're harmed online. So walk <laughs> us through your work, uh, how you came into this business, and also why it's so critical here in 2012 and ah, close to 2013. Yeah, sure, and thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate it. There's a couple of things. Uh, online reputation is becoming more and more important. Uh, there's a statistic, I think it's 92% of uh, people look online and look at reviews before they purchase or buy something. Uh, that's really important. Uh, people today are looking online for everything, for reviews, but also for professionals, for lawyers, for uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, business deals, uh, things like that. Uh, so I got into this, um, I have a background in IT for a long time, but also in search engine optimization. And I met with a client and they said, hey, I have this problem, can I solve it? It was something on Yahoo Answers. So I was able to wipe it away, get it off, which is kind of unusual to remove something, but it is possible, and save their reputation. Uh, some ways that it can impact a business is uh, if someone has a bad reputation uh, online, uh, the phone doesn't ring. You might not know why someone's not calling you uh, because uh, someone might have written a negative post about you, uh, a competitor might have written something about you, something might be showing up on a complaint site, which are really easy to set up, unfortunately, and fortunately. Uh, you know, for people that have a legitimate complaint, but oftentimes a lot of the issues are not really legitimate. Again, it could be a competitor, it could be just a client had a bad day and is writing something really bad about someone. Sure. So there's a lot of different ways that, uh, you know, can factors can impact a negative reputation. Great, thanks for that intro. Steve, now um, I, I would like to know, and I'm sure some of our viewers would like to know, you know, there are many places that these so-called negative posts can be made. We have uh, sites like Yelp, we have uh, Facebook, we have Twitter. In your experience, do you treat all of these places equally when dealing with a client or do you say like, well, if it's on Yelp, it's really bad, but you don't have to worry about this? Or do you take all of them seriously and advise your clients the same way? Yeah, that's interesting. It really depends. It really depends on the client. It really depends on the issue. Everything is very variable. So, for example, if something shows up on Yelp, uh, by the way, something on Yelp cannot be removed. Some things can be and some can't be, but that's one place where a negative review on Yelp cannot be removed. So that's just a fact. Take it back a step. Uh, yeah. Search engines. Uh, Google, king of the world, controls everything basically I mean things gotten better but I mean I guess people are still uh, let me ask you people still focused on Google right I mean that's that's, yes. that's around the world so Google so, calls the shots Google controls the algorithms those are moving targets how do mm -hmm. you keep up with that world uh, and you, you know I know you came from a background came from a background of SEO uh, because Google has the secret right about what things rise to the top and what, what things go to the bottom and you know when, you, when you're doing great work and your clients love you of course you want to be on top but when uh, a major news outlet or a blogger writes about you and it's negative you want to bury it so yeah it's a challenging world yeah exactly the, th the algorithm from Google always changes Google is really the main force um, Bing has been making some inroads um, but uh, to be honest with you it's really all about Google um, and the algorithm changes, as you might know, uh, as some of your listeners or, or uh, followers might know. The algorithms change uh, frequently every few months, maybe some maybe some minor changes or some major changes. But I think the main focus um, 
on any content development or online reputation management or repair, the real focus always should be on producing good content, right. producing good, interesting, well-written content for people, for human beings, not to try to... Uh, to game, you know, game the system. system. Right. Exa yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that will probably won't change, and that's becoming more and more emphasized, as is local search. So those things are shifting a little bit away from you know the old days uh, you know black you know I've never used black hat techniques but there are a lot of um, other you know uh, options in the past to use those or kind of uh, a little bit shady techniques and nowadays those are being pulled away which I think is great uh, so again the focus still has to be on producing good focused well written content with I think um, in SEO background really helps with repairing a reputation because you really need to know what is of interest to your readers, really to your clients. Um, you know, who's going to click on something and you really have to know the business as well to, to present a good reputation strategy as well as just a good business strategy on how to promote yourself or how to get people to follow you, find you, uh, all of those things are all interrelated and make uh, are part of a good online reputation management strategy. Now Steve, uh, I'm a big social media user myself and uh, I learn things anecdotally you know with my own business by posting things in different places, seeing how they respond and it's kind of interesting and uh, I don't know if you tell your clients this, one of the things I've noticed for instance is we're using Skype here, but on my show where it's posted, where, where people are watching this, uh, they're watching it on Google Plus and YouTube, obviously Google Properties. And I also noticed that when you post things on certain sites, that helps your Google search results. So do you also advise clients on where to post the good content? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, that's a little bit flexible, but there's a couple of basic parameters, and that's a really good question too. Um, yeah, Google properties make sense, are great places to really get a big rise about uh, to help improve your reputation. And again, just to step back for a second, on the online reputation management side, we try to remove negative posts, but usually that's not possible. So what we try to do is inundate the web with good content. So again, part of that is to pick where to post those things to. So to get back to your question, yeah, Google Places, uh, Google Local, Google Place, uh, you know, what it's kind of changed names, right. is a great place. Uh, YouTube is a fantastic place, uh, as you might be aware of as yes. well, as some of your people might be absolutely. aware of. They're great for my clients, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Um, and find, and again, filling out all that information. So if you have a negative reputation or, again, if a competitor wrote something negative, producing a video about your business focused on, again, good key search terms, kind of part of the SEO side of things, and filling those filling the information out when you post the video on YouTube is very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and just to mention a few other sites that might be sure. helpful, um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, those are all major ones. Uh, Wikipedia is great if you can get yourself on there. Some things are a little bit hard to get um, uh, to write an article about yourself is really not uh, the best approach. Maybe there's you know some other ways to get yourself an article about you or your business, uh, but that's a great um, resource. And industry specific, finally, industry specific sites are a great resource. So if some, for example, if uh, someone is a lawyer, uh, social media sites for lawyers, uh, AVO or other business sites. Are a great way to get a boost and push down those negative items off the first page or off the second page because again that's really the whole goal in online reputation management. Steve thanks for that you know you you, you mentioned something I wanted to uh, to uh, go back to uh, you mentioned about getting an article uh, and I, it reminds me of a, a situation I had with a client about a year ago uh, they were using one of these overseas SEO companies that they uh, were using to write articles, and uh, I looked at it. I, I wish I had, uh, had been retained by them much earlier in the process, and 
so I get the Google alerts for the, for my client, and I'm looking at the article. It was obviously written with the sole intention of SEO, but it was uh, inaccurate. Uh, probably could have gotten them in trouble legally because of the content that was in there. It made no sense. Uh, mm-hmm. And they said, well, we just use that for SEO. I said, but it's killing your reputation. I said, you can't have a non-writer, somebody who's, uh, who doesn't speak English, write an article for you. Uh, and then uh, expect it to help your search engine results and by extension your reputation. So it was an interesting exercise and learning experience for me. And I hope a, a lesson for companies out there that think they're getting a good deal by using a company overseas, saving the money, but not getting, well, uh, as we know, and I'm sure you've seen it in your business, these, there are a lot of companies like, that uh, are maybe technical in SEO, but don't really understand the reputation side of it, which is, which is the most important. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, again, it's really important to have to write good, fresh content. So it could be a blog post, it could be an article, uh, it could be a video, it could be um, a number of things. It could be a PowerPoint presentation, uh, but the focus should be on writing good things. And you can put in, you know, sprinkle, not deluge, uh, you know, not just uh, completely. Uh, keyword stuff because that's kind of what you're talking about as well. Also, Absolutely. yeah, poorly written and keyword stuffed. Uh, keyword stuff is again is just putting in uh, keywords all over the place so that you just and then calling that an article, which is exactly what I saw <laughs> from a previous yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the, the other thing I want to talk about is you you made a good going back to this idea of articles. It reminds me of my background in public relations and journalism. And uh, one of the things I tell clients. Uh, when there's a negative news story written about you, whether it's in you know the New York Times or Wall Street Journal, your local newspaper, uh, anywhere in the world, uh, one of the great responses online and off is to write a letter to the editor uh, in print or and or uh, comment directly on that article because almost uh, most of the articles that are not behind paywalls are available online, available on Google. And you can go in and set the record straight. So if there's inaccuracies or, or somebody is making a negative comment uh, about you, uh, it's a great way to also balance the story online and off. So it's just another thing I'd point out, another tool uh, in the arsenal of online reputation. And by the way, uh, it's my view that you know reputation today is about online. It's the first place people look to find information about you. So we're in a new world. And we have been for a few years, obviously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Today, your reputation, your online reputation, is your reputation. And just to go back to what you said earlier um, with the comments, that's a very powerful way also to get visibility, to get uh, traffic to your site, and to push down negative comments. So there are major sites, Huffington Post, for example. Yes. Um, but also just to have to be aware that some comments are not indexed by Google. And that is not a Google issue, but it's really the website itself might not index the comments. So that's something to be aware of. And you, as far as I know, it's hard. You don't really know which ones are doing it and which ones are not. They don't say, like, hey, you're, this is not being indexed. And just one other point, too, is uh, to set the record straight is important. but. I would not recommend it on certain sites. So, for example, I agree. Yeah, yeah and just to be clear for the listeners, if yes. someone posted something on uh, complaint board, complaintsboards.com or scam.com or you know one of those, there's half a dozen or a dozen major sites where someone can go anonymously or whatever and just post something negative. Again, could be a competitor or it could be a legitimate issue. It's hard to tell. Um, so, I would I recommend clients. Uh, it might be tempting, but not to go there and write a, rep- uh, a comment saying, you know, even if it's polite, oh, you're wrong, or this is, you know, um, uh, let's talk offline or whatever it is. Because if you write a comment there, that's only going to give more juice to that it's, post. It's feeding the fire, and I totally agree. And, exactly. and I should have clarified yeah. earlier, I really was referring yeah, to yeah. legitimate news organizations where yes. some, a reporter is doing a story and maybe it's slanted to the other side or it's taking a, a tough shot at you. Uh, I mean, I'll give you a great example. I was watching 60 Minutes the other night, and there was a healthcare company that really took it on the chin uh, in this investigative report. And whenever you're on 60 Minutes, you know, it, you know it's not going to be pleasant. 
uh, unless it's a puff piece about some composer or some musician. But anyway, uh, I because of my interest in the subject, I went to their website, and they actually did something smart. They put out a, a statement, and I think there was a video too, uh, countering what they knew was coming out on 60 Minutes on Sunday. So you went to their website uh, a few days before. I actually went, I went to it that night, but it was posted a few days before the broadcast, uh, countering some of the, what they expected would be the, the most negative points in the, in the 60 Minutes story. And I think it was a good use of you know, trying to push it down or trying to get that side of the story out. I didn't go beyond that, but I think it's a good start and a good lesson for business. Just because uh, a negative story is coming out or it's come out, it doesn't mean you have to sit there and just uh, not do anything about it. There are things you can do, such as the kind of work that Steve does, the kind of work I do on the crisis management side. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. There are ways to be proactive, um, either knowing that something negative is coming out and kind of brace yourself and react, be able to react uh, to you know combat that, or just kind of be proactive in general. So maybe the, I'll just mention a couple of ways to do that sure. is to be proactive in general. You know, just make sure a lot of companies I, I talk to don't have a website, or if they do have a website, it's not very active. Um, so fill yourself, get a lot of online presences, uh, like I mentioned before, including Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter accounts. Even if you're not that active, it's good just to have those accounts ready and you know they can protect you against an onslaught of online uh, negative reputation. Um, and when something does come out, you know something negative is coming out, um, get ready. You know, you can write articles, you can uh, get the word out there. You know, just be cautious that um, there could be a backlash against your promotion, so just be aware of that. But kind of get things lined up, maybe uh, write some blog posts, um, optimize your website maybe for a different search term that's uh, part of this negative uh, issue that's coming out. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one thing that you can do pretty quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe have some articles around or if there's videos or other content, gather all your old content and maybe try to repurpose it or get make sure your online presences are optimized and set up properly and just Try to push that content, even if it's a little bit old, old maybe update it and, and push it out there. Maybe it wasn't pushed out properly before. There's new sites out there, uh, Tumblr sites, for example, or Pinterest, that you can add uh, stuff to. So get prepared and get ready and you know, kind of do this uh, as an ongoing basis as well to protect your reputation and even to build your online brand. All these things are interrelated. Uh, so those are some you know ways that you can uh, help moving forward to protect and uh, follow your online reputation. Yeah, you made a great point about having these presences, uh, if you will, uh, online. Uh, I was talking to a prospective client earlier this week, and they said, "Well, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, we don't really see the need." There was someone in the company who saw the need, but there was. I said, "Let me stop you there." There's a group of people who want, and there's a bunch of naysayers, right? He said, yeah. I said, look, I just got done with you guys doing extensive crisis management media training. There's your answer. Because if something happens to your company, and it's a pretty good-sized company, if something mm -hmm. happens and somebody tweets about your company or puts it on Facebook, at the very least, there's no risk in setting up, as you say, uh, having this presence, uh, having a Facebook page ready to go, having a Twitter account ready to go, having a LinkedIn account, hopefully with some more meat on the bones already because it takes a little time to set those up. But they're all free. So there's no excuse not to have them, even if you're not pulling the trigger on using them just yet. But if a negative story breaks out, a negative uh, item breaks out on Twitter about your company, <coughs> to me. have to first set up that account and get it going with your first, you don't want your first tweet to be, you know, trying to defend yourself. So you're absolutely right. Today's a great time to do this because every day there are greater, uh, greater number and better quality tools to do this. Uh, Google Plus uh, started a little over a year ago, uh, and I think it's a wonderful tool to get get your message out and yeah. all the Google properties associated with it. Twitter, uh, of course, is the place that news is being broken today, as we all know, but it's also a place where people complain, uh, sometimes about minuscule things, as we discover. 
but mm-hmm. it's still taken seriously uh, as a source of information. So for, for those out there, uh, no excuse not to at least set up these social media properties. They cost nothing, uh, but be ready to respond. The other thing I wanted to add, Steve, to this conversation, and I'd like to, your opinion on this. I'll give you mine first, though. Uh, the person inside your company, if you have somebody, depending on the size of your company or law firm or professional service firm, the person doing your social media should have a background in reputation, should have a background and know how to write. Uh, very often what I see is these jobs, these positions go to the, the people right out of college. So maybe they understand social media, they know how to text, they grew up with the stuff, but they don't really understand the business and they don't understand the business of reputation management. And so uh, my mantra very often, which is to tell people, get someone experienced behind that. Don't leave your social media controls to the junior person. They may be able to hit the, execute it, but you need, you need at the top of your company, at the top of your organization to be involved in what goes out and how it's said. I, I think you'd agree on that, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's a great, great point. I, I agree completely with that, and I think that's really important. Uh, and and you're right. I think a lot of pe- a lot of companies might be using interns or, like you said, kind of just recent college graduates. Nothing against them. No, it's important to have a, a business sense and an understanding of a strategy. You know, before in the past, like maybe uh, ten years ago, p- your nephew could write your do your web page. Now you have a professional. Same thing with a social media person. Uh, you know, maybe it's tempting to have uh, an intern or uh, junior, someone junior, yeah, yeah, junior level person. But it's really your reputation on the line. And a lot of cases, um, I've seen cases where someone could send out a tweet that's offensive or a problem or not thinking, or they sent it by mistake or whatever. It impacts their online reputation. So, does a company really want to take that risk of their own doing? You know, their, their own company could be at risk by their own people, you know, not in every case, but it, it, it's, it's, I agree completely, that's a very, very good point, that you, it's really important to have someone that understands their business, how to communicate, um, and, you know, how to send the message out there. And it takes more than just growing up and being familiar with um, the tools of Twitter and whatever else. So that's a great point. And just to mention, just to go back to one other thing you mentioned, which was great with the online properties and presences, uh, just to look at that from a, uh, an online reputation management view for a second. So if you look at Google search page, there are 10 slots, there are 10 positions on there for links on the, on one page. So if you think about it, you might have, if um, you might be able to fill those slots up with three or four or five of these online presences and that's a really great defense to begin with uh, to prevent an online reputation management issue or onslaught. So if you have the first five or six or, or ten, you know, as many as you can, filled up with good information. So for example, your site, your blog, uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, maybe Wikipedia, that's like six or seven right there, maybe Manta, maybe two or three others, you could fill up automatically, you know, fairly easily. It's not a complete defense, but it's a good way to um, prevent, uh, you know, a um, major issue from occurring uh, on your first page. So just wanted to mention that. That was uh, an interesting no. point that you brought up. Yeah, good point. And just to follow what we were talking about, this, you know, uh, how you manage your social media, uh, one of the things to keep in mind also as a company, as an, as an organization, uh, is to have a social media policy. It, to, it goes to your point about having people tweet on your behalf or post on your behalf and maybe not reflecting the company's culture or maybe it's not saying what you needed to say at that point in time. Uh, just like in the public relations world that I come out of, uh, where we uh, develop media relations policies that every company should have. Uh, just the same, uh, social media policies are equally important today, and, and they're very related to it because social media, media, the lines get blurred uh, very often today. And every media outlet is a uh, has a social media outpost, or outpost, and uh, uh, many social media sites are are now considered news sites uh, on their own, standalone news sites. So it's, it's a, yeah, yeah, that's that's really important to have a policy and. 
Um, it's important to have one now when you don't need it in terms of an emergency. So if your reputation is, if there's an online reputation management issue, you're quickly setting up Twitter accounts or maybe you already have the accounts. What is the policy? Well, it seems like there might not be time to like go through and kind of write down all the things you should say, all the things you shouldn't say, what is the company's views on certain things. Uh, so now, before the issue occurs, is the time to get that set up. That's really important. And I think there was a case, I, I believe it was um, Whirlpool that had an issue with on Twitter. I think it was during one of the presidential debates, I guess a couple of months ago. Uh, a social media consultant or uh, I think it was an outside sourced person um, wrote a tweet that was uh, controversial and, and caused an issue. And they had to, Whirlpool, big company, had to immediately respond. It was picked up, in fact, on Twitter during the debate. I think there were hundreds of thousands of responses to this one tweet. And that caused a big issue. And they had to, you know, call, they had to respond with a uh, press release and all kinds of campaigns right. about that. So there's many examples where one tweet can really impact your online reputation. So having things in-house, uh, having an experienced person, having a policy can really help prevent and that turning into your own online reputation issue that's created by yourself, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and thanks for the share that about Whirlpool. I do remember that. I think we, we dealt with that on the Crisis Show earlier this year. And there's many other examples that we've uh, identified. Uh, certainly, you know, one tweet, one post, uh, can be de incredibly damaging, and then the company has to apologize for it or backtrack, uh, and it's 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 uh, it's it's very challenging to keep on top of too. I'm sure it keeps a lot of executives up at night worrying about what are their employees posting on Facebook in their private time about their company or about their bosses or about uh, mm -hmm. the internal workings of their organization uh, that might not be uh, let's say flattering to to the uh, the company as a whole. Yeah, and and just to take that a little bit further, it, it could be a lot of personal related things that you mentioned, but it also could be business related. So there could be um, things that business deals that are being in the works that someone might say, oh, you know, they might uh, kind of damage that deal. Trade um, secrets, yeah. Trade secrets, right, exactly. It could be um, other proprietary information that's business related, it could be other intellectual property about the company or whatever. So there's other, you know, there's a lot of personal related issues, but it also could be leaks uh, that are really directly business related and can have a big impact on the business. And um, I've also heard of people, uh, disreputable business dealings, uh, where there are um, business deals being put together, uh, someone, uh, a venture capitalist or whoever putting the deal together or a lawyer or whatever might not, uh, like that deal or they might purposely try to uh, spread negative information about that deal either to get their own deal that's better or to lower the initial stock offering so that they can get a better deal and buy in and then the stock will rise after the issue is uh, resolved. So there's a lot of these so, again. So you're saying they're using, uh, I'm sorry, they, they're using social yeah. media to, to, to get that message out, uh, to leak it out if you will? Yes, there. I've heard of cases uh, like uh, uh, people, uh, business dealings purposely being impacted or ruined or uh, changed or impacted uh, by these negative online reputation or social media kind of campaigns. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's not a good way of doing business, but I've heard these things out there. So again, it's really online reputation really means business. Okay, uh, it's great, great conversation so far. I'm just trying to think of some other areas that we might not have covered for our viewers in terms of the importance of this. I think we stressed that. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other uh, examples, if you will, that have been in the news in the last few months. Um, that eh, I'm just kind of yeah. brainstorming with you on that. Maybe you have a few, I don't know. Yeah, well, one uh, maybe I could mention is uh, one thing that occurred recently in the last couple of weeks was the BBC issue. Oh yes. Um, and that was kind of a separate 
you know, had its own internal, you know, kind of issues and, and scandal. But in terms of online reputation management, just to focus on that for a second, um, it's, uh, I kind of looked at how they responded. So um, it, it really impacted their business. So uh, before the issue came out, I guess about a month ago, if you did a search for BBC, you would come up with BBC News, uh, BBC TV, BBC Radio, and a lot of the BBC shows. After the scandal came out, or even the next day, when you search for BBC, there was a uh, BBC scandal. BBC, uh, you know, CNN had an ITZY News. Uh, you know, Steve, Steve, your audio broke up for a second. Could you repeat that? Oh, sure. Um, when you went back to, when you uh, searched again for the BBC, after the scandal, like the next day, you saw a whole bunch of um, negative articles, negative links, negative issues about the BBC, and all of the information about the BBC programming was pushed off the first page. In fact, it was pushed off the second page. I think it was wow. pushed off to that's, like. And that, that takes a lot of negative stuff to do that, to, especially yeah. for an organization that has that uh, online cloud, if you will, that a BBC does have and, and would have. Good point. I guess if, if you're BBC and, they, and BBC came to you, the question would be, well, how long is it going to take to get this negative stuff pushed down? I get asked that question, too, uh, uh, when I get retained for this kind of work. So what's yeah. the answer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know about the BBC because that's a major, major issue. But in general, a campaign takes, um, you might see results immediately, um, but a campaign might take an average of three to six months to uh, work through and repair an online reputation in general. Um, I've seen things, I've been, I worked with a client just now and I got some things pushed off. One thing, there's two more remaining, but one thing pushed off the first page in the first week. That's unusual, but it might take, you know, the other items, it might take, um, you know, three months, uh, four or five months, something like that. Um, it, it, and it's it's not really there's a little bit of alchemy there's a little bit of technology there's a little bit of kind of common sense there's a little bit of liter you know writing skills that are necessary but it's not you know things fluctuate things change um, it's hard to know you know each case is different and other things could impact your issue as well that have nothing to do with you just for example to go back to uh, like the BBC or Hurricane Sandy. So, for example, if you had a business name and Sandy. your name is <laughs> Sandy, right, or, yeah. you know, uh, something like that, or the BBC, for example, that impacted the New York Times because uh, Thompson, the ex-head uh, of the BBC, now became president of the New York Times, uh, his name was implicated during the scandal or issues. So, uh, things could leak over uh, into the New York Times. So if you did a search for the New York Times during that time period, uh, the news items were pushed off by news items about the New York Times. So there are some things you just don't know. Uh, some issues could crop up that have nothing to do with, could impact your reputation, could impact your repairing of a reputation, maybe it could help uh, repair a reputation, these other things. So it's really hard to say, but uh, a campaign, it, it just takes time. There's a lot of moving parts involved. Yeah, you know, Steve, uh, in my work, and I, I do some digital video work too under my other business called Rich Social Media, and so very often I've, been, I've worked with very small businesses, entrepreneurs, and they have no presence. And in some, of the, some cases I have advised, let's start out doing a video, uh, a YouTube video talking about or, or demonstrating what you do. And I started this about, I guess it was 2010, with a massage therapist uh, who really didn't have any name recognition at all in Westchester, New York, and did a video and put in just the right keywords and search terms. And, you know, she still is number one and two for, uh, on the video and the Google search results because we, we did the video. And it, not that it has a thousands of views. It has like a thousand views, I think. Not a lot by... It's not a viral video, but the point I'm trying to make for our viewers is you don't have to make a video and think uh, it has to get a thousand viewers, it has to go viral to be important to the people you want to reach. Uh, in her business, uh, she catapulted over all these other massage therapists uh, to the top 
and as I said, she was largely an unknown, unknown person in this geographical area uh, when she started working with me. And then she, and I think the key to our success, one metric we used was, well, now we've, uh, <coughs> bless you, now we've catapulted ahead of the Ritz-Carlton which in, in White Plains, New York, which offers massage therapy. Mm. So it was an interesting learning experience for me because I didn't know going in we'd get to the top. But I realized a couple of things. Number one, video is so powerful today with Google algorithms. So if you're thinking, where do I start with social media to build this reputation? Uh, video is a good place to start if you have the people, person or people, the face of your organization, if you will, who can pull it off. Uh, being photogenic and being able to speak well and, and communicate well and really tug on the emotions of, of the audience. And it doesn't have to be a long video, and it shouldn't be, right? It should be maybe two or three minutes, right? People's yeah. attention spans are short. But one of the other reasons I raise this, Steve, is that if this person or anyone else I've worked with or you've worked with uh, has started to, as you said at the top of the show, building good content, uh, it sort of is a buffer if and when you get negative media coverage, if and when you get that negative comment, it will help protect you when that does happen. But if you're starting out with a negative comment and have no social media presence and you don't have any video presentation and you have no Facebook page, you're starting from way behind the eight ball, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Rich. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And video, as you mentioned and as you found out, as we probably know these days, is really important. So you can get someone uh, that can be the face of the company or the issue uh, or, or uh, I take that back, could just be um, someone that has a good presence and that can really help a lot. And you're right that it doesn't have to be millions of views, it really can even be a few hundred depending on the key search term and where the person is ranking, what the business is. And again, for the reputation side of things, uh, even if a video is not even uh, viewed a substantial amount, that can help. Uh, in a big, big way. And other things to think about with video are, are maybe even converting something like a presentation uh, to video or adding a narration to something um, can also be helpful. It might not be as elegant um, and it it's, might not be the best thing, but it can also really help your reputation, again, of pushing down those negative things and if it's helpful, you know, if it has, if you're narrating a good information, uh, giving some good uh, industry-specific, you know, tips or tools, for example, or you know, whatever it is, that and it can be helpful to for, to people. Right, and you make a great uh, you make a great point, Steve, which uh, kind of leads to what I was going to say, and that is uh, the content that you provide, whether it's in a video, in a blog, uh, in a in a Twitter post. And it really has to be about your audience, not about you. Uh, you want to show your thought leadership, yes, but it's not an advertisement. It's not like a TV ad transferred to the web. It doesn't sell. Uh, people want to, people's attention spans are short. They want to feel like they're getting something of value uh, every time they uh, tune in to your uh, show, to your tweets, to your Facebook page, to your YouTube video. So make sure. It's about the audience you're trying to reach. Real important thing to think about. So, why don't you just add that in? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, right. That goes back to the initial uh, idea of making good content. So, making good content for who? You know, think about yourself. Like, if you're looking for something, looking for a video or a blog post or whatever, what do you want to get out of the, that information? Do you want to, do I want to see someone promoting themselves? Um, well, you know, maybe once in a while it's okay, but I really want to get information. So that's really helpful to think about who are you trying to reach out to, who are your clients, prospective clients, who are your readers, viewers, whatever. And again, that helps with the social media side, but also especially with the online reputation side, because you want to present good information out there. You don't want to just have fluff pieces about, you know, whatever, what I had for breakfast or, you know, who knows, whatever. Um, it's it's important to have things that are specific that people will want to look at and to pass on to someone else, to uh, forward to someone else, to um, add to LinkedIn. You know, that's really where the value comes in when they're kind of you know passing the information on. You're retweeting something. Those are all great ways to increase your 
rank of your Twitter page, Twitter account, and tweets. Um, and again, that helps push down those negative uh, uh, online reputations. So yeah, that's it. That's important. Important point. Yeah, thanks. So I want to I want to sum up here, and feel for our viewers' benefit, you know, and Steve, feel free to jump in. It's just some of my thoughts here. Uh, we live in a world where everyone with an iPhone or a mobile phone is a citizen journalist. So uh, in the past, if you had a, a customer complaint, maybe they wrote a letter to you, uh, and you got buried, and you didn't have to deal with it, and now somebody just goes to Twitter or goes to your Facebook page, and you know, and rips you uh, very very easily. In the past. 10 years ago, even seven or eight years ago, they didn't have to worry about that. And today, every company has to be aware that that uh, one complaint can get a lot of traction. Just like uh, somebody going to the Daily News or the New York Post here in New York, uh, filing a lawsuit. They may not, it may not be a legitimate suit, may not have any merit, but they get a reporter's attention. The reporter does a big story on it, and then they're dealing with a major online reputation Oh, should I say, uh, dealing with a major reputation challenge to the business immediately. The point of this show, of the crisis show, is to uh, help people understand that things like uh, a negative statement on Yelp, things like uh, a statement on your Facebook page, things like a tweet about your business that questions the integrity of your business, that is a crisis for your business, and you have to treat it as such. And that's why, uh, that's one of the things Steve and I uh, try to advise our clients that you got to take this stuff seriously. You got to be proactive and try your best to get out ahead of it. And there's no excuse uh, today with, as we talked about, all these social media tools, 99% of them are free. Uh, for the ones you have to pay a little bit more for, uh, you may or may not need them. But I think we'd all agree uh, that the tools themselves are free, uh, where the cost may be incurred of uh, hiring people like Steve and myself to guide you through that process to make sure, make sure you're doing the right thing to move the negative stuff down, right? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And you're right about things have changed where one person can really ruin someone's business. I've worked with clients where um, that's happened. Really? And in some cases it's not warranted. In some cases, you know, there might be a legitimate complaint, you know, but it's 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 it important. doesn't matter you go yeah it doesn't yeah, matter it's right right it, it, legitimate yeah. or not it's good it's the effect that uh, as a business owner you have to worry about you know and That's, uh and yeah. you know, steve you know one of the things we didn't cover i wanted to also ask is you know and i i struggle with this too they get a negative comment somewhere whether it's yelp or uh, on the comments page of their website or a blog mm -hmm. how do you decide what you should respond to or not. I get this question a lot. I imagine, I don't know, do you get that question too? Like, should we just let it go and maybe it'll go away? Or do we have to respond to every single comment? Yeah, yeah. Where do you draw uh, the lines? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to know exactly what to do. And uh, We kind of talked about that a little bit, so I'm glad we yeah. kind of circled back to that. It's, um, I guess my recommendation uh, is, is it impacting your business? And is it something that's showing up on in a Google search? And where is it right now? Uh, so, for example, if it's showing up on the first page and it's something that's damaging, yeah, you want to probably deal with it. Either contact the person offline, probably, um, or have an online reputation management campaign or go into crisis mode, kind of as you say. Um, if it's uh, something that's showing up on page 10 of Google, Maybe it's not an issue, or maybe it's not affecting you now. But also be aware that that, that can, really, yeah, can go on to the first page. Um, is it from what is the source? Is it like the New York Times that's showing up on page ten? Well, yeah, that probably could show up on page one very quickly. Is it something um, by um, uh, just one person on you know their own blog site that's showing up on page three? or page 10, well, you know, maybe, maybe not. It's hard to know if that might inflame that person and cause them to be more reactive. Or if um, maybe it, they just had a bad day or who knows, and, they, and, and contacting them is really the best solution. Uh, it's a little bit hard to know, but really monitor it. Probably a good idea to respond in some way and be ready to, you know, uh, uh, try to resolve it. Right. Uh, but it's you know, really kind of depends, uh, you know, if you're feeling pain immediately, yeah, 
you really have to respond. Yeah, and I would just add from a, from a uh, public relations standpoint, reputation standpoint, if somebody has a legitimate complaint about your business mm. uh, and, you ju and you don't deal with it, you, know, you ignore them, or, you know, if it's a legitimate complaint, uh, deal with it. Because, and it's just like anything else, you know, when you're in a crisis mode uh, for any reason, uh, be proactive. And because very often people just want to know that you're listening. They just want to know that you care. Uh, they spent their hard on money on you, or they uh, they had an experience. They they had higher expectations of the service they they received, and didn't meet their expectations. So sometimes it's a it's a quick phone call, an email, or a post that apologizes. Uh, people have trouble apologizing today, and I tell my clients it's so much easier to apologize uh, than to incur the problem of having your reputation harmed much more much deeper and then eventually it's going to it's going to affect your bottom line as well. So yeah, that's a really good point as well. That's almost really a preventative issue or nature if if someone is proactively or if someone is monitoring all of the, you know, tweets or, you know, uh reputation or complaints or whatever and responds right away, that could make that issue disappear and make it not show up in Google search. Right, and not only that, by the way, it just reminded me of something, you know, I, I monitor, you know, monitor Twitter for the show very often to look for articles and topics, and, uh, you know, I notice the airlines now. People are complaining on Twitter, and the airlines, of course, are an, are an industry that uh, have come under tremendous criticism over the years, you know, for their baggage fees, for, for planes that don't take off on time and don't land on time. But I've noticed, like JetBlue, I think, and I think American Airlines as well, they're actually very proactive on Twitter, saying, uh, Mr. Miss Customer, we're sorry you had this experience. Uh, we'll try to fix it. What, what was the problem? Call us online. Call this number. Send us an email. And they're, and they're actually very public about it. And I have to tell you, uh, when I think about choosing an airline, I'm going to look for those airlines that, that are proactive like that. You know, I think that so even though they're dealing with uh, an unhappy customer, it's how they handle it, it actually can build the goodwill uh, and build build, yeah. build your reputation. So. Exactly. Yeah, it can it can be turned it around into it. something that's positive, a positive reputation, kind of online brand building, uh, and it really can again help prevent or neutralize almost immediately if there's an issue that crops up. They know about it. If if they're being proactive and if they're uh, responding, that's a, a perfect uh, example of how you can turn something around into something that's positive. Um, and exactly, you might be thinking about, oh, well, this. Airline might be, you know, more. This is helping me choose and decide. Right, they're being responsive. You know, yeah. Look, nobody expects perfection in business. Uh, people make mistakes. We're all human. Uh, it's acknowledging those mistakes and being able to uh, fix those mistakes. That that's where it, reputations are built. I think. Uh, and even the big companies that we know of, uh, look at Apple. Uh, as successful as they are, they've had some mistakes. But when they when they find sometimes it's a little slow, but when they had a problem with like their iPhone four and they finally came out and said, you know what, we're going to provide this to fix it, uh, people get that and they respect that. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, but be afraid if you if you ignore the problem and and yeah. let them fester for a long time. So. Yeah, yeah. And before you could ignore them with big corporate uh, companies and no way to interact, you just have to write right. a letter back to them. And, right. Just, right. Good uh, so the letter could just be filed. About, but you know, or a phone call and logging a phone call and maybe getting a phone call back maybe. or email. Yeah. Um, but things are different now, so I think people and companies are a lot more responsive, and I think they are hopefully understanding that. If they're not, their their business could be in danger. Absolutely, and we'll leave it there. It's a, it's a great point to leave it on. So, uh, Steve, thank you so much for this. Was great information. I'm sure our viewers will appreciate it. And we'll do it again. I'll have you back on a more formal uh, panel discussion with some other experts in the field. But uh, it was great to learn about uh, how you work and how you think. And uh, we, we clearly think alike in this world, and I appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to uh, more dialogue uh, on this. And hopefully that uh, the, the people watching the show will, will gain some great insights here and, how they, and take a hard look at how they run their businesses and their organizations. Uh, keeping uh, Again, keeping this in mind that uh, your online reputation is your reputation. So I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you viewers yeah. for watching. Uh, Steve, thanks again. Pleasure to meet you, uh, you. this way and uh, we'll talk soon. Uh, sure. Thanks again for watching everyone. Again, the website is www.thecrisisshow.com. Uh, if you'd like to tweet about the show, please use hashtag thecrisisshow. 
and uh, we'll probably uh, take off for the holidays the next two weeks, and we'll see you in 2013. This is Rich Klein. Thanks again for watching. Take care, Steve. Bye-bye now. Thank you.